when we first talked about domestic violence, we talked about battered women having a whole range of psychosomatic complaints. We used to talk about it in those kinds of terms as if it was, you know, all in their heads. And of course, as we learn more about the human body and, and health conditions, we know that the mind and body are inseparable, uh, that the stress response affects a lot of different areas of health. So one of the things, for instance, that we found is that, especially for African-American women who have other genetic risk factors for hypertension, that we find that they experience, if they're abused, that they have experienced hypertension emerging at a younger age, and it's harder to control. So we have the effects on cardiovascular health as well as some of the things that we've known for a long time in terms of abused women have more chronic pain. Now you can think about that in terms of, again, a psychosomatic kind of complaint, but what we have found is that much of that pain is related to old injury. So for instance, one of the things that women oftentimes say is I get slammed against the kitchen cabinets. And they'll say, you know, it's not that bad as some pushing and shoving, and sometimes he'll slam me against the kitchen cabinets. Well, if you think about it, if you get slammed against the kitchen cabinets over and over again, eventually you're going to develop chronic back pain. And it's going to be injury. It's going to be constant injury. Um, we find that many times women have been knocked unconscious by an abusive incident and never treated for it. And so they may have had uh, what we now know to call traumatic brain injury. You know, many times subtle uh, concussions uh, that, you know, in our football players, we're beginning to recognize this is really an issue if you have a, a series of multiple concussions and have, that this is not good. And so no wonder abused women have he chronic headaches, have various what we call in, in the healthcare system soft neurological signs. In other words, subtle neurological symptoms that, you know, they don't know how to explain to themselves, let alone to a physician. And unless that physician or that nurse practitioner is smart enough to really do a trauma history and find out that they've been abused and that this is multiple, you know, injuries that have never actually been treated or haven't been treated in a cumulative way, they don't see the true picture and they don't know the true di diagnosis. We also find that there's some complex physiological effects of stress on the immune system, activates the autoimmune system. So battered women, for instance, may have a tendency to have more asthma attacks, that their, their immune system is being uh, activated all the time by these stress responses. They may have uh, more fibroids, and this is one of the things we've also noticed with abused women, as well as a whole host of GYN problems, pelvic pain, um, urinary tract infections, these kinds of things, more uh, sexually transmitted diseases that are related to the forced sex that happens to 40 to 45 percent of abused women. And now one of the, the you know, tragic consequences of what we're seeing with domestic violence, and we, we have been able to document it better in Africa because there's more HIV in Africa, but even here in the United States is the intersection of domestic violence and HIV AIDS, where women who are abused are significantly more likely to have contracted AIDS, and it's usually they've contracted it from their abusive partner who has had other partners that she doesn't know about and or who forces her into sex and you know we we always talk about you know you need to negotiate condom use with your partner well if you're in an abusive relationship negotiation you know is not it's not a level playing field um, so these are the kinds of things that we're we're seeing a whole realm of um, healthcare problems we also see abuse during pregnancy with consequences to both the unborn child and the mom and then we see the mental health effects that are pervasive and serious, the increased depression, increased suicide amongst abused women, increased PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, that kind of trauma response. And we know how to recognize that and treat that now in veterans of war, uh, but 
And although we have some good treatments for PTSD for women who have been raped, they have not been used extensively with women who have been abused, and, and we need to do that. So there's a whole range of healthcare problems that battered women incur. Uh, they have GI problems, chronic beer, irritable bowel syndrome, um, and oftentimes these healthcare problems are continue for the woman as a chronic health problem long after they've gotten themselves out of the abusive relationship. Unfortunately, their their body has been scarred uh, by these ongoing abusive incidents as well as their psyche.